Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho here in Paraguay. We are racing up towards the storage facility up over there for the train because something terrible has happened. Our weekly event, our random weekly event has occurred and it came up with something that we haven't had for quite a while but it's reared its ugly head again and I was wanting to get some stuff built over by the pigs to protect to ensure against such an occurrence and I didn't do it in time I didn't do it last week and this week we are in trouble mold in the storage barn we must take the crop that we have the highest quantity stored and we have to sell it for the lowest price available now this wouldn't necessarily be a really really bad thing except that um, for, for, for one really really important detail and I will show you that in just a second we just stop there right corn corn is the one that we have the most of we've got 8,000 liters of beans there and 19,000 canola so we've got protein we've also got wheat and barley there but 125,000 liters of corn and 487 is the lowest amount available if we've got to sell that we're in serious trouble if well we do have to sell that we, we've got to sell that that is um the lowest amount available because it's covered in molds we can't do anything with them we can't feed the pigs on the you know because there's a risk of poisoning them uh, we have no wheat, no barley, no canola, no soybeans. Oh. oh, I've never been so pleased in all my life to see something. Right. It's not a complete and total disaster. We do have corn in this storage facility. And I did say previously that I thought, well, yeah, it'd be good if we would do this, but we'll just sort of do for the main farm storage. So we've lost ourselves 125,000 litres of grain, but we haven't lost everything. We have not lost everything. Fortunately, we do have a little bit left. So the first task that we have to do this week is carry the corn from this silo down to the harbour but we're also going to move the corn that is being stored with the train um, and we're going to move that into a different silo up over there so it's a bit close to the pigs and then we can move it into yet another storage if we move the storage around a bit um, then it, it's safer it, it, it's better all round and this is very true to real life as well you you well at least where I'm from um, and the farms that I've worked on that have done arable crops they would never store all of the same crop in the same place, just in case something happened. Um, it all went, it all went bad. It went mouldy as a disaster with the storage facility, whatever. It would always be split apart into several different places. So we've lost the one where we have the most grain. Um, now, I'm for gameplay purposes, just to make it a little bit easier. I'm actually just taking the one at the farm because the others we've physically got to go around and check. So I just thought it would be easier if we did it like this. Um, but splitting it apart and storing it in multiple locations is quite acceptable. That is something that we could actually do and we would do in real life. So I'm, I'm not in the least bit concerned about that. I think that we are sort of being quite realistic doing that. So we've got some backup grain. We do have some corn available for the pigs. And we will be um, taking some of that up there later today. We're going to get the potatoes planted up there on that plateau. And we've also got one other thing that we're going to need to do on this series before we go. After we've got the pigs sort of started. And we haven't quite done as much the animals as I wanted to. I did want to do more. We'll do a little bit more to animals to start with on our next major map. Um... But obviously, I, like I said, we're going to Under the Hill first. Now, this is the map that was created by a close associate of Sinikadu. And if you've not seen his channel in the... Not in the description. In If you go to the main channel page and you look at the suggested channels, there's a link to his channel on there. It's an absolutely brilliant one. He does all farming simulator or real-life farming videos. Um, and... He's got a very unique style about his farming simulator videos, and they're really good. They're, they are really entertaining. They're, they're short, 10 to, 10 to 15 minute videos, and he does them really, really well. He's, he's got this style, and I've not seen it anywhere else. I've seen a few sort of people try to copy them. There's always going to be um, imitations, but nobody seems to quite be able to grasp the essence of how he does these videos. 
um, in any of the channels that copy his style. And so if go go and check him out. It's absolutely brilliant. He's just recently hit 80,000 subscribers. He's doing really well. And um, I've been speaking, I've, I've spoken to him on and off quite a lot for the last couple of years, actually. He's, um, I, I, um, you know, I think he also suggests he's got my channel and his suggested channels linked or something like that. He lives in Slovenia, I think it is. Now, I mistakenly said... Is either last week or the week before that that was in Eastern Europe, and I have been corrected on that. It's it's in the eastern half of Europe, but it's not actually classed as Eastern Europe. Europe is broken up into sort of a few different areas. You've got Eastern Europe, which is kind of the countries near the north that neighbour Russia and that kind of area, and um, towards central moving towards central europe you've got central europe you've got western europe you've got southern europe which is ones around the mediterranean but then you've also got southeast europe which is like the um the, the balkans and area around there um slovenia is there it's, it's in that kind of region it's not classed as eastern europe and i apologize for anybody in that region when i said eastern europe i was simply generalizing um and i didn't um i wasn't setting out to upset anybody uh, but I was called out on this that it's specifically not Eastern Europe and some people in that region will get quite upset if I'm running around saying they're part of Eastern Europe because it's not, it's a different region completely with different customs, different traditions, it's, it's, it's different, right? It's, it's vastly different, vastly different. So i just clarify that. Um, I didn't actually realise and um, so I'll just state that right now. And, but we're going to under the hill, so um, uh, we're, we're going to go to that map first. And after this one, there's going to be a few more weeks on here, and then we're going to the under the hill map, which is the one that is set in Slovenia. And I think it's Slovenia. I'm going to find out now that I've been saying this wrong as well. Um, so yeah, make sure you correct me. Anybody from that region, anybody from the, around the Balkans area, uh, please correct me when I'm getting things wrong, because I know very little. I've, I've realised just recently that I know very little about that region of Europe, which is quite shameful, really, considering that it is the continent that I'm from. I'm from Europe, right? I might be in the, the far opposite corner of Europe compared to people down there, um, but uh, I am still from the same continent, and it's quite shameful that I know so little about it. So um, please correct me and educate me as we go through the Under the Hill series. But we're going to do a few weeks down there on Under the Hill, and then after that we're going to be moving to another map. And I will probably wait until we're doing the Under the Hill series before I present my choices to you for the final map. Um, now, I was also wondering what I should do because what what my plan is we're just gonna sell the rest of this grain here and for our absolutely pitiful low price and then once we've done that we're going to go up onto the plateau we want to get a bit of fertilizer sprayed up there we've got a thing of fertilizer up there we couldn't do it with the big bud so we're gonna have to swap the tractors around a bit um, and we'll spread some fertilizer then we want to get a potato planter and we want to get some potatoes planted up there as well i'm not going to mess around with um pallets or trying to do it in any quick way i'm going to get that potato planter loaded loaded up as quickly as possible and get the potatoes in the ground i want that done asap and once that's done we've got the pigs that we want to set up and while i'm setting up some housing for the pigs we're gonna get the pigs activated going this week hopefully we'll put water and food and everything into them so we basically we've we've got the pigs here and i'd also like to buy some sheep as well because you said you wanted me to do sheep but i'm aware that this series is sort of trotting on a bit now we've um we're on episode 76 now so really it is time to start to wrap things up so we're hopefully going to be able to get quite a bit of that done this week and then next week we will do more with the pigs and the sheep and we'll try and do a little bit with the cows and hopefully by that point the um, potatoes will be nearly ready to harvest. We'll have another harvest to do out in our fields which will set some combines going, maybe use some course play and that'll, that'll be like the final harvest that we do here. We may not even... I mean, I'm kind of hoping that we'd finish the harvest. I'm kind of hoping that we'd get the harvest done. Whether we get another combine in and we'd, like, release another combine or something, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do yet. Um, and two weeks, possibly three weeks, I am hoping... I mean, I know... I'm, my time scale, my, my 
guessing my times is absolutely terrible in this game. I'm useless at it. I'm genuinely, genuinely useless at it. Um, but I'm really hoping that we can get the majority of all of this done in two weeks. And we'll have one more week to sort of wrap things up. So three weeks, including this week, three weeks. And then we move on and we go to under the hill. Now I'm expecting to do three or four weeks there. I'm not really sure. It'll be nine or 12 episodes on the under the hill map. It's a very small map. We'll have a look around it. We will try a few different things out. Mostly it's to take a good look at the map and show it off. Um, show off um, sort of everything that it's got and what's available on it. And then uh, we will move on to a bigger map for our series. Because I'm aware that majority of people watching the series do not want me playing a really small map. You want me playing a big map. Um, or at least a full size standard map rather than a very small map. So I'm going to look at Under the Hill purely because Sinikadu has asked me if I would be able to do something with it. Um, and I've, um, you know, I, I just, I, I like the map. I've had a look at the map and he's been doing this series on this map for a very long time. Uh, various different versions of the map through the different versions of the game. And I, I do feel... You know, it's, it's an honor, really. His, his channel was around long before mine. He's been doing Farming Simulator videos for a long time. Um, and I felt it's quite an honor, really, to me, um, to be asked by someone like him if I could please consider using his map to do something with. And so, uh, yes, absolutely, of course I will. Uh, it's, abs it's an absolute privilege. So I'm really looking forward to doing this. And I've had a good look around the map. It's now available on the mod hub anyway so everybody can um, get onto the map and they can drive around you can do everything that you want to do on the map it's a really nice small map it is for small stuff right i will uh, having a look around it it's designed specifically for small scale i don't think you'd even get medium scale in on the map it's, it's really well done and can, is really well thought out in order to make small scale viable but not really anything else and that's one of the great charms about it. This is one of the things that I really do like about this map. Right, let's just stop there a minute. And the next thing that I'd like to do... See, if I jump out of here, I should be able to go straight to the train like this. And we're going to take this 98,000 litres. We're going to go around the map and we're going to tip this out in the storage facility over the other side of the map. It's going to make it a little bit easier for delivering some stuff to the pig. So that was our weekly random event where we lost a whole load of cash because of mould in the storage barn. Um, we mustn't forget to sell that silage before we go. So my question I asked you all last week was when we do go on to our next map, did you want it to be um, a map all about arable, all about animals, or a mixture of everything? And I had 1,119 people answer the question. 165 people said they want animals. 216 said just arable. 738 of you said that you would like a mixture of everything. And the predominant associated comment that was coming up in the comments section was really want a mixture because otherwise it just get you basically if i just stick with one subject it gets boring very quickly we get through the available gameplay far too quickly and then we're limited on what we're able to do so if we have a decent mixture of everything all the way through it's going to allow for a better and more interesting series a more varied series and potentially a longer series if that's what people want so that's what we'll do. I will look for mixed maps rather than specifically animals or arable. I may put in one of one or the other in. I'm not quite sure at the moment, but I will go back and I will study carefully your um, suggestions and I will go through. I'm not going to pick out a map that I don't particularly like myself. Um, several people have said, oh, well, maybe, you know, having a look at them, if maybe you don't like one of them quite so much, you could offer this. I'm going to say now I'm not going to pick a map that I don't want to play myself. If I, The problem with going to a map that I'm not sort of particularly interested in is I don't want to then produce a series. And, and the quality of the episodes is going to do be considerably worse than it is right now. We're going to stick with our theme. We've had an underlying theme where we're being sponsored by Agco, which is kind of a, um, an excuse for us to be able to get some different uh, big expensive toys into the map and i'm going to keep with that theory that that that, that sort of um gameplay idea in we're sponsored by agco we're going to stay sponsored by agco um for at least the rest of fs17 so that if there is something in particular that we want then we've got a good reason to go and get it i quite like this whole idea and it does it fits very nicely 
So we'll stay sponsored by Agco, and you know we'll probably, well, hopefully, we'll sort of have the odd reason to actually use this um, sponsorship deal that we've got going. Now, I'm just going to back this one up a little bit so that it's away from the facility there, in case I need to get anywhere near it for um, bigger trailers. There, we put that one there. Right, so we are closer to the pigs now with the grain. We've got the grain right there and the pigs are just there. It's a much better place to have it. And grain elevator three, grain elevator. Where's grain elevator two? This, oh, it's down there. Ah, I wasn't, um, yeah, okay. So that one's down at the bottom. Now, next job. We need to just finish off the cultivating up here. Now, if you remember, at the end of last week, for some reason, it started behaving really strangely. I was getting a really odd, strange lag coming up up here. No idea what caused it, but it's not here at the moment. I genuinely, I've got no idea what was causing that. Um, and it, it quite concerned me, so I, I, I wrapped up the end of that episode very very quickly and then uh, and moved on but I, I really don't know what was causing it I've, I've got no idea I've not been able to reproduce it so yes it might have just been my PC doing a little bit of um, internal maintenance or something occasionally Windows likes to throw out the odd update that you don't know anything about um, but anyway it's not doing it at the moment so it doesn't really matter we'll get this up through there and then as soon as we've done this little bit here we can put a fertilizer spreader on and i'm thinking we'll put the fertilizer spreader onto the challenger here actually no Ooh, i wonder if the big bud can pull the potato planter um i'm not using keyboard steering you can see that just by the the easy um, just like the slow movements of the, the vehicle. So I'm, I'm back to using my um, steering wheel. I don't want to be using keyboard steering all the time. Um, but, I, yeah, I'm just wondering if the big bud can pull the potato planter. I know the big bud can pull some things. I'm going to use the big potato planter rather than the small one. I'm curious now, because if the big bud can pull... I was thinking, oh, maybe we want the challenger to go and get the potato planter. But we might not need to. If I, I'm just going to leave the cultivate it right here. I'm not going to worry about doing anything else with it. Uh, so let's just put that one there a minute and then we'll bring this one on over and we'll put the fertilizer spreader over there on it. And what's the potato planter like? Because if, I mean, oh no, I don't want to be looking there, do I? I'm going to press P for the shop. There we go. Uh, potato harvesting. It's not going to be in there. It's under sewing machines. There we go. Now, we've got this little tiny Grim there, the three meter one, uh, but it's not that one that I want. I want this one here. It doesn't have a PTO on it. No PTO on this one. It's just got the hitch on it, but it's it's got a regular hitch. It doesn't have, it's not a three point linkage hitch. Because it's got a regular hitch, I think we might be able to put, tow this one behind the big bud. It's six meters wide, this bad boy. It also takes fertilizer. We can put. I uh, think we can put liquid fertilizer or solid fertilizer in. I've never actually used liquid fertilizer out of it, I don't think. Um, and we can fill that up back at the yard, and then obviously we've got the potatoes as well. So I think we're going to try that one. We'll try that one right there. And we'll, uh, we'll just lease it, because we're only doing we're only going to do this um, the once. There we go. We'll back that one out, and then we'll, we'll uh, return it as soon as we finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one going here, and... I'm sort of thinking that maybe, just maybe it would be a good idea if we we just back that one up a bit and then come forward there. Sort of about there, I think. We'll hitch that one on. And lift that one up. Right. Oh, we missed a bit there with the cultivator. Let's not worry about that right now. I think that I will, I was just thinking that maybe I wouldn't go, oh, hang on. You know, it would help if I attached the PTO as well. Let's go in and do that. There we go. Right, now it should actually work. Back up a little bit. I'm wondering if it was something to do with this, trying to attach the PTO on the the big bud. Maybe that was what confused it? Not really sure. Anyway, it's, it's working at the moment. So, we'll do this, and then I can... You know, I've missed a whole load. That's alright. We'll ignore that. Um, we'll, we'll do this. I'll set the hired help just finishing off this, and if I get a little bit closer to the edge, that would probably be a good idea. Although, the very edge, we're not actually going to be putting potatoes on. I'm doing kind of a, a strip up through the middle, just to make it easier for harvesting. Um, 
and we're not actually going to have time to get to doing anything up here with the small combine doing an arable crop up here it's the only disappointment i think for this entire series is that we're not going to really have time to do that if i stay here long enough to do that it's going to get a little tedious um well i suppose the only i there is one option and that is if i just do a lot of fast forwarding time May, maybe I was actually thinking that we wouldn't really have much in the way of weekly questions between now and when I finish the series, or at least now and when I ask the map question, although I'll likely just do that in uh, when we're on under the hill. Um, but I'm actually thinking we will ask a question this week. Do you want me to stick with my plan of try to wrap this entire series up in the next um, three weeks, get everything done in three weeks, or do you want me to stay here maybe another week? It, it probably wouldn't be another week. We may even be able to do it in the three-week time scale that I've set out. But do a lot of fast-forwarding of time so that I can do one arable crop up on here. We'd use the small bison combine for doing the harvesting. So would you like to see me do a harvest up here of an arable crop or just move on once we've done the other jobs and not worry about the arable crop? So it's your vote. It's your game head into the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner and we've almost finished coming up through here we're just going to sort of wiggle in round i'm gonna cover that bit with fertilizer anyway um but we're probably not going to be putting any potatoes in that bit so we'll just wiggle in through here and then once we've done this and we set the hired help going we can take the big bud down to the shop we'll leave the lifter the, the trail lifter we can leave that one behind we're not going to need that for the potato planter um yeah i did miss a little bit there just because of the way that it turns but that'll be all right it's not going to matter uh we'll take yeah so we get the big bud down there we'll get the potatoes and we've got liquid fertilizer on the trailer back here so we'll do we'll worry about that when we get back up here and we can just sort of pop in and I think we're going to need to use the truck actually and switch over so that we've got the um we can load it up with seed as well we can we can buy a little bit of seed down at the shop right let me just set that one going there he goes i thought for a minute he wasn't going to do it yeah and i go to the big bud i'm going to just dump the trailed lifter right here it's just going to be faster and we'll run down to the shop now, the big question is whether or not this one is going to work with it. So we've got that. I just don't know if it's actually... Well, there is an easy way to find out. We can just turn the thing on. We need to first unfold. Well, it's sounding promising. We unfold a minute. So you lift that bit up and then it, um, it unfolds the back and the front bits like that. There we go. Nice big potato planter this one is. And, oh yeah, it drags that bit in a bit, doesn't it? And then... Now what? Sink potatoes. I don't know if this one has a PTO on it. Oh, actually, you know, it doesn't matter. Because we can use PTOs on this, can't we? Well, I just press Z for the PTO attachment and nothing happened. Maybe there is no PTO on this one. I thought you could have PTOs on this. I genuinely don't know at the moment. Let's go and fill it up a minute. Maybe we need to just have the thing full. So we want to just go in here and... First of all, I'm just going to check what the capacity of it is. It's 9,020, but that's going to tell us the overall capacity rather than just the seed capacity. So I'm not actually sure what the seed capacity is. We'll buy two pallets of seeds. They are, oh, they're 1,000 litres each. No, we'll buy four. So let's buy four bags of seeds, and then when we've done that, two, three, and four, we can go out and we can get those loaded into the machine. I'm assuming it will then be we'll be able to switch it on once we've got some seed into it. When it'll it'll class as sort of being switched on. It, it wouldn't let us switch on, but I think that's because it's got nothing in it at all. So let's just do that. Here we go. And yes, it works. Fantastic. We are able to do our planting. Right. All I need to do now is I'll fill this one up and then I'll run it back up to the farm so that we can get the next bit going. If I do that like that. There we go. Right. 4,000 litres of seed of potatoes is only half filled this one. So it goes quite a long way, the seed does. Well, I say it goes a long way. Um, we don't. I, I can't remember how long it goes. Uh, no, I mean it, um, it, it has a very high capacity of seed. Very, very high capacity of seed. Now, I'm going to fill up with some liquid fertiliser here. 
Uh, there we go. Right, the straps are working all right on that trailer. It does sometimes do little odd things if you're not careful when you're trying to do things like that. Um, but we'll back out of here. How much seed have we got in the We haven't really got much seed in the seed tender over there either. No, we haven't. Uh, fertilizer. Uh, that tank over there is fertilizer and not seed. So we'll just take this one as he is and we'll drive this one up onto the plateau. The difficult bit is going to be actually getting onto the plateau with this one. And then we've got to start doing the potatoes. And I think we'll use the... Can we use the GPS? can't remember now. No! We can't... No, does it? Yeah, I honestly can't remember. G does GPS work with articulated machines or not? Oh, yes, it does. GPS works with articulated machines. It's the... Um, it's the other machines that it doesn't work with. It's the... Um, oh, what, 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 it's, it's not the other machines. Uh, the AI vehicle extension. The AI vehicle extension, the one that helps you with the combining of stuff going around the corners. You've, it also works with tractors, but it doesn't work with articulated tractors. That's the one that it struggles with. So we can use... That is a steep old hill, but this tractor has no problem at all grunting its way up through that one. Um, yeah, it's it's the AI vehicle extension you can't use with articulated tractors. The GPS mod, that does work with articulated machines, so it's all going to be okay. The tractor is saying that it's finished, but I don't believe it. I don't, I don't think it actually has finished. It's got a little bit of fertilizer still to spread, and then we've got another fertilizer on this... Oops, steady. Drive over that. So let's just stop there a second. Uh, no, I want to go that way. There we go. We'll finish just spreading this field. And get that little bit there. And there's another bit up the other end, I think. I say there's another little bit up the other end, I think. There's actually quite a big chunk up the other end. That's all right. We don't mind that at all. It's, we've got to decide how we're going to do these potatoes exactly. Where, where we're going to sort of position them. Because I do want to leave a decent gap around the edge to make it easier for us to do the harvesting. Because I don't want us to be bogged down with doing potato harvesting for absolutely ages. That's not, that was not my intention at all. I didn't really want to do... I was, I was actually really genuinely torn about whether we should do root crops at all on this series. Because root crops can be quite dull to get through. It's, it's alright like you do a, a very small patch of them. But they do tend to get quite tedious quite fast. Um, it sort of works all right for when I'm doing the time-lapse series, but again, I'm, I'm not a fan of doing that in the time-lapse series because it's quite dull actually doing the job. Um, that is uh, one of the things that I did with Sandy Bay that I sort of regretted doing halfway through um, making that decision because I said I was going to do a lot of potato... Ooh, hello. Maybe it's this fertilizer spreader, but we had the whole lag thing come up again. That's really strange. You see, I don't know if it's up here or if it's this fertilizer spreader. Because it's only happened with this fertilizer... When this fertilizer spreader has been up around here. It might be the Challenger. But I... I, I don't know. I don't think it is. It's just... Yeah, but anyway. It's, it's, it's only done it the once and then it stopped. So hopefully it'll stay stopped. We've less, left a little bit behind there. I'm going to leave that one this time. Um, we'll go racing up through here. Yeah. Is there anything else? There doesn't seem to be anything else. It's not catching again. So there's something strange going on with a little bit of lag. There's probably a mod conflict here somewhere. I do have a lot of mods these days. Um, and generally we find, I, I, from speaking to other players and sort of seeing them on uh, various Facebook groups, um, it does seem to be that as you get nearer the end of the, the season for a particular game, um, so we are approaching the end of the FS17 season. The, um, the FS19 season will be beginning in a few months' time. It always seems that as you approach the end of a particular farming simulator season that um, a lot more people start having troubles and hang-ups with their games as they start to much more heavily mod their gameplay. Um, you generally find that people will put a lot more mods into their gameplay towards the end of a farming simulator season than they do sort of um, beginning and middle. Um, it, it, it's generally just because we're looking for things to just kind of keep the interest alive because once you've done the same thing you know for a year or so it starts to get a bit boring so you want you want to change things up a little bit that's when you start like um increasing the mods and, and using all sorts of different ones uh left that down haven't i there we go right okay i used to 140 liters of potatoes just to do that little strip 
I got a feeling that we're going to struggle with this. Now, what I think I'm going to do, I was just thinking I'll do a line here so that I can sort of mark the edge. What I think we'll do is we will do an outside round so I get a rough idea of where we're going to put potatoes. Um, and we're going to leave quite a big gap all around the edges. There is going to be a big gap around the edges. But there is our potato planter and our little buds in all their glory going very, very nicely. Put that map back on. Um, I'm very pleased with this. Comes along quite nice. Actually, I could move a little bit over towards that edge. We'll try and keep the lines reasonably straight. And like I said, I want room to be turning on the edges of the field so I don't have to worry too much about going around the edges when we're actually doing the work. Um, of the well when we're actually doing the harvesting is the harvesting I'm taking into account because we're going to use the Roper DLC the uh, trailed potato harvester we also want to take into account that that is a small potato harvester and so we don't want too many potatoes for it to be harvesting because it's just going to get very tiresome so while we go racing up through here with thundering up through here at incredible speeds uh, my big question do you want me to just tag on to the end of this series? I've outlined at the beginning of this episode roughly what we're going to do to wrap up this series now. Um, would you like me to just tag on to the end? We will fast forward time as much as we can, plant an arable crop up here on this plateau and then harvest it using the small bison combine. We won't be able to use a bigger combine up here. It just wouldn't be viable. But I mean, I suppose we could like get the small, is it the TC5? Um, the TC590, is it? The, um, the the small New Holland Combine. We might be able to do that. We, we could use that one. That one um, would it'd be about the only one, really, that we could use. Um, but anyway, the point today is, do you want me to do a small arable crop on here, utilising every single bit of ploughed space that we've got up here, or do you think we shouldn't worry about it and move on once I've done what I said I was going to do at the beginning of this episode? So it's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. We're going to go up through here, and then I'm going to... No, I don't think I'm going to be able to sort of, sort of put it going straight just yet. And I do wonder if I'm going to have to do two passes on this in order to get the hired help to, like, formally recognise that it's got to stay inside of these lines. So I may have to just go round once more in order to do that. At the moment, I'm not sure. We'll find out when we get down to the other end, or we'll find out in tomorrow's episode rather than today, because I don't think that we're going to quite finish it. Um, but, if, I mean, if you've enjoyed the episode then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. We will get to the end before I wrap things up completely. And I do like the way that it is following the contours. That I've said this before, um, but I do particularly love the fact that we've got the contours here. So personally, I'm hoping that you vote for just a slight extension on this series so that we can do the harvest up here. I would very much like to see the combines working up here on a harvest. And I think we could, now that I've thought about it, I do think that we could get another combine besides just the bison. We could go, oh, no, um, let's just take a quick glance at these harvesters. We could use, I mean, like the Sampo Rosenlu there, or the Case, or the New Holland. Those are, all three of those are viable options, I feel. Because, I mean, the case right there, that is 4.3 metres, that one's 4.2 metres, and then that one, see, that one at 5.5, I think that might be pushing it. I mean, we look up through here, this one here is 4.2. So, I mean, if that one fits, then certainly the Sampo Rosenlu and the old case, they would fit. These two here, that one may even be too big. That one may be too wide. Although, this is a 6 metre width, and this one hasn't missed any bits yet. So maybe the new Holland could as well. We could have three combines working up here. That would actually be pretty cool, running three combines up here in order to do this. Um, now, is this going to actually turn properly? I, got a f I don't know if it will. It should do, actually, because we've got a full width, so there's no real reason why it wouldn't. Let's just test it out. I've done one width, so I may as well just come up here and just start. Let's try this out. What's it going to do? We'll press H. There we go. And then we've got the beautiful contours here. I absolutely love this. 
I reckon that the New Holland might do this. I, the, I, I genuinely don't know if the New Holland would be able to do it, but I'm not, uh, the, the other combines, I think they would be all right. It's, it's, the very outside round, I think, would be the most troublesome one. And we're going to use the Bison to do that. If, if we do this, we would use the Bison. So, yeah, I am deliberately trying to influence a vote this week. I do hope that you let me do this because it's something that I would actually quite enjoy doing. And, I mean, if you don't want it, then obviously we won't do it. I'll probably just come back and do this in my own time because I'm curious how it's going to work out. But anyway, that's all we got time for today. So, sorry about that. Somebody was knocking on the door. Um, yep, that's all we got time for today. So, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.